Hello and welcome to Free Code Camp CSS section. We're going to start where we left off. We finished all the HTML section. Now we're in basic CSS. Introduction to basic CSS. So let's go there. It says cascading style sheet CSS tell the browser how to display the text and the other content that you write in HTML. Note that CSS is case sensitive so be careful with your capitalization. CSS has been adopted by all major browsers and allows you to control color, fonts, positioning, spacing, sizing, decorations, and transitions. There are three main ways to apply CSS styling. You can apply inline styles directly to HTML elements with the style attribute. Alternatively, you can place CSS rules within style tags in an HTML document. Finally, you can write CSS rules in an external style sheet, then reference that file in the HTML document. Even though the first two options have their use cases, most developers prefer external style sheets because they keep the style separated from the HTML elements. This improves the readability and reusability of your code. The idea behind CSS is that you can use a selector to target an HTML element in the DOM document object model and then apply a variety of attributes to that element to change the way it is displayed on the page. In this section you'll see how adding CSS styles to the elements of your cat photo app can change it from simple text to something more. Let's go to the first lesson. It says basic CSS, change the color of text. Now let's change the color of some of our text. We can do this by changing the style of our H2 element. The property that is responsible for the color of an element's text is the color style property. Here's how you would set your H2 element's text color to blue. H2, and then we give it this attribute style, which is going to contain this color of blue. And it's going to apply that to the cat photo app text, which is a heading 2 element. Note that it is a good practice to end inline style declarations with a semicolon. Change your H2 element style so that its text color is red. So we go here, we look for our H2, which is all the way up there, and we want to add a style, which is color red. And let's do the semicolon. And now if we zoom out, we see it changed our cat photo text color to red. So let's run test. We did a pass. Let's go to the next one. Use CSS selectors to style elements. With CSS, there are hundreds of CSS properties that you can use to change the way an element looks on your page. When you entered H2 style color red cat photo app, you were styling that individual H2 element with inline CSS, which stands for cascading style sheets. That's one way to specify the style of an element, but there's a better way to apply CSS. At the top of your code, create a style block like this. So we're going to copy that. Inside of that style block, you can create a CSS selector for all H2 elements. For example, if you wanted all H2 elements to be red, you would add a style rule that looks like this. Style, and then our closing style. Within there, we're going to have this H2, and we're going to specify that H2 should have a color of red. Note that it's important to have both opening and closing curly braces around each element style rules. You also need to make sure that your element style definition is between the opening and closing style tags. Finally, be sure to add a semicolon to the end of each of your element style rules. So delete your H2 element style attribute and instead create a CSS style block. Add the necessary CSS to turn all H2 elements blue. So let's go here. We're removing this here and instead we're going to add style. I know I copied it, but I retyped it. Within there, we're going to select our H2 and give it a color of blue. You might have seen that I skipped a line and whatnot here. It doesn't really matter. You could also have it like this. But once you start adding more styles, you're going to want to be able to read it better and this kind of helps. So as we could see our cat photo app was changed to blue and that is because we applied this style up here. We could also select other things from within there like paragraphs by going right under that curly brace and doing a P and then doing something like color yellow and then zoom out and you could see our paragraphs have turned yellow but it didn't ask to do that so let's erase that. Let's just go next we did pass. Let's go to the next one. So use a CSS class to style an element. 
classes are reusable styles that can be added to HTML elements. Here's an example CSS class declaration. So there's a style, the same as we've seen before, but now we're selecting this blue text class. So you can see that we created a CSS class called blue text within the style tag. You can apply a class to an HTML element like this. So now we have our H2, we give it a class, and it's called blue text. That will give it the blue text class styling, which would give it a color of blue. So note that in your CSS style element, class names start with a period. In your HTML elements class attribute, the class name does not include the period. So inside your style element, change the H2 selector to dot red text and update the color's value from blue to red. Give your H2 element a class attribute with a value of red text. So if we zoom out, go up here. What they want us to do is instead of H2, we're going to select anything with the class of red text. Within our H2, we're going to give this a class and assign it to red text. So we should probably change that to red, even though I don't think it's said. Oh yeah, change the color from blue to red. We did that. So now if we zoom out, we see it did give it a red color again. And that is because we are selecting anything with the class red text and applying this color red to that element. We only got one element using that class red text, but check this out. Here where it says click here to view more, which is this paragraph. If we go in there and just add that class that we just created, red text, you'll see that it changes our paragraph also to red. So we can get out of there. Just so you guys understand that, we did apply a styling by first naming that style as a class called red text and then finding or adding that class to our elements within our body here. So let us run test. We did a pass. So next, basic CSS style multiple elements with a CSS class. Classes allow you to use the same CSS styles on multiple HTML elements. You can see this by applying your red text class to the first P element. So your H2 element should be red. Your H2 element should have the class red text. Your first P element should be red. Your second and third P element should not be red. So your first element should have the class red text. So that's actually what I think I did on that last one, which is just doing class equals red text. So these other paragraphs here will not be changed only our first one as you can see. So let's see if I run that. We did pass. So change the font size of an element is telling us font size is controlled by the font size CSS property like this. We have an H1 that's selected and we're saying we want the font size of that H1 or all H1s to be 30 pixels. Inside the same style tag that contains your red text class, create an entry for P element and set the font size to 16 pixels. Zoom out, go back in here. So inside our same style, we're going to this time select P elements and give them a font size to 16 pixels. We go out, then all paragraphs are now 16 pixels. As you can see, these are a little bigger. Let's run test. We did a pass. So set the font family of an element. You can set which font an element should use by using the font family property. For example, if you wanted to set your H2 elements font to sans serif, you would use the following CSS. So we have H2, we do font family for all H2s, and we specify sans serif or serif. Make all your P elements use the monospace font. Go back, go up to our style. All our P elements will have a font family monospace. So we do see that applied to this paragraph and these two here. So let's run test. We did pass. Let's do another one of these. It says import a Google font. In addition to specifying common fonts that are found on most operating systems, we can also specify non-standard custom web fonts for use on our website. There are various sources for web fonts on the internet, but for this example, we will focus on the Google font library. Google fonts is a free library of web fonts that you can use in your CSS by referencing the fonts URL. 
So let's go ahead and import and apply a Google font. Note that if Google is blocked in your country, you will need to skip this challenge. Luckily, Google is available to me. So to import a Google font, you can copy the font URL from the Google Fonts library and then paste it to your HTML. For this challenge, we'll import the lobster font. To do this, copy the following code snippet and paste it into the top of your code editor before the opening style element. So there's that link. And basically, you can go on to google.com, search for Google's lobster font, and I'm sure it'll be like the first or second link that will open up Google's page where this font is available and it'll give you this link. But we're going to just add it here. Actually, I don't even know if it's asking us to do this. Yeah, import the lobster font. So, okay. Now, you can use a lobster font in your CSS by using lobster as the family name, as in the following example. Font family, and here we would put lobster. The generic name is optional and is a fallback font in case the other specified font is not available. Oh, that's this second one here, generic name. So, we could specify their mono space and if the lobster isn't available, then uh, the mono space will show up. So family names are case sensitive and need to be wrapped in quotes if there is a space in the name. For example, you need quotes to use the open sans font, not to use lobster font. I always just use quotations, but create a font family CSS where that uses a lobster font and ensures that it will be applied to your H2 element. So at the top, we already added that link that will give us access to the lobster font. So now we just need to go here, and I think it's up to the P elements. Let's make sure. Create a font, so apply to your H2. That's this one. Oh, we don't have one yet. So H2, all H2s will get a font family and do lobster. And it doesn't say, yeah, the default. So import lobster, your H2 element should use the font lobster. Use an H2 CSS selector change the font. We did use the CSS selector for H2 to change the font. Let's see if it did do that. Our H2 does have a nice font to it. Run test. We're not passing the CSS selector to change the font. So that is an H2 CSS selector. Oh, just need a semicolon. So we'll probably end it with this lesson says specify how fonts should degrade. There are several default fonts that are available in all browsers. These generic font families include monospace, serif, and sans serif. When one font isn't available, you can tell the browser to degrade to another font. For example, if you want an element to use Helvetica font but degrade to sans serif font when Helvetica wasn't available, you would specify as follows. Paragraphs font family, Helvetica, comma, if that's not available, sans serif. Generic font family names are not case sensitive. Also, they do not need quotes because they are CSS keywords. To begin with, apply the monospace font to the H2 element so that it now has two fonts, lobster and monospace. So that's here. We would go here and do monospace. In the last challenge, you imported lobster font using the link tag. Now comment out that import of the lobster font using HTML comments you learned before from Google font so that it isn't available anymore. Notice how your H2 element degrades to the monospace font. Now, if you have lobster font installed on your computer, you won't see the de degradation because your browser is able to find the font. All it's saying is comment out this link. Let's zoom out though so we can see the change happening. If I comment this out, we see the cat photo app changed to that monospace. And if you didn't see that, let's uncomment, and there it is. So, if we run test, we should pass. And we did. So, we learned a bunch of stuff right now. Let's actually see it in how this would look on our browser. Let me open Atom. So, if I go into my desktop, and I go into, I forgot what it was called. It was, once it was sample free code camp, so... Let's go into that folder, and there it is. Let's open that up, and, and we do have it here. We have our head and our body here. Our style tags that we learned about, first off, could go same inside our H1 element. We could specify color to purple, save that, and then even let's open up the finder, and then go to desktop, and then look for sample free code camp open it in the browser and now change to purple so if we go back and instead of putting that here 
we go into our head, which is the metadata of our site, not the actual content, we can add our style, right? Within there, we could also select that H1 or all H1 elements and say all H1 elements should be color red this time. Save, go back here, refresh, and it's black, even though it should be red. Save refresh and it's red so like we learned as well we can give classes to our h1 so this time let's change it to class and call it blue text we could then select it here instead of doing h1 do dot blue text change color to blue we could now save that refresh did change to blue and we could apply that class to other things in here like here class equals blue text or this list item not sure if this one will work but let's try it class equals blue text save it go back refresh and we did get our paragraph to be blue text and this list item to be blue text and that's kind of what we learned through these lessons is how to apply stylings to our elements inline which would be just applying the style directly on here by doing style equals text align there it is text align save that and we see the paragraph here was now centered we could do all sorts of stylings inline which would be directly in the element or we can do them using the style sheet in the next lessons, we will learn how to create a separate file called something like style.css, and that way we could keep our HTML and CSS separate, which makes it a lot easier to read. But for now, we'll leave it here. The other thing before I sign off was font family could be something that we get from online. Uh, I'll show you guys that, and then we'll end it. If I go to Google fonts you get some Google fonts let's say I like this one here I add it I could go ahead and click this grab the link copy it come back over here and in the head I'm going to link to that which gives me access to this here which is what we're going to use when we call it here and let's do it to all let's do it to our h1s so our main heading should get font family and then paste that name then semicolon so let's see if this works so we do see the font changed and that is basically what we learned in these lessons so if you found this video helpful make sure to share like and subscribe and we'll finish these next lessons up in the next video maybe two but i'll see you guys then